Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to The Walk. Today is Thursday, June 29th, and we have been going through a series about prophecy, what it is, how people are called, um, several different nuances of it, how it's a spiritual gift. Today, we're, um, we're still talking about prophecy, but we're shifting gears a little bit. We're going to be talking about false prophecy. There are several warnings in the Bible against false prophecy, and we are told several times to look out for false prophecy. So let's pray. Lord, we know that as we go through our days, we are encountering false prophets. We ask that you allow us to have those God goggles on our face to be able to recognize when something is pulling us away from you, something is not lining up with scripture, and therefore it's not aligned with you, so it cannot be from you. Lord, we ask for that gift of discernment as we go through our days so that we can spot those false prophets and be aware of it. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So, um, as I said, we're talking about false prophets today. And as I read through this, one of the things that really, really jumped out at me is that these false prophets are very intentional. They're very cunning. They're compared to a wolf in some places in scripture. And a wolf is very cunning. It's very stealthy. It's very sneaky. And then it zooms in for the attack. It is very purposeful. Now, there are times where people make mistakes and a mistake is not intentional. A mistake is they thought they heard a word from the Lord. They were fairly sure it was from the Lord and it wasn't. And they made that mistake. It's still incorrect. The false prophecy is still incorrect, but the false prophecy is intentional. It is intentionally trying to pull people away from God and put the focus on themselves. So in Matthew 7, we have Matt, Jesus talked about false prophets um, a lot of times, but one of those places is in Matthew 7, 15, where it says, watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. The wolf is intentionally hunting the prey. The false prophet is intentionally hunting for their prey. But their fruit, by their fruit, you will recognize them. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Likewise, every good tree bear, bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. Now watch the prophet very closely. Are they serving? Do they have a servant's heart? Are they there to be in God's tool belt or are they expecting God to be in their tool belt? Which way is it going? A good tree cannot bear bad fruit. And a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, by their fruit, you will recognize them. So pay attention to, are they able to be an active member in helping to build God's kingdom? Or is that cut off in some way? Are they bearing that good fruit? And then continuing on in verse 21, it says, Not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Are they God's servant or are they expecting God to serve them? Will Many will say to me on, the day of, on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and in your name perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evil doers. Keep yourself in that gut check mode. Keep checking. Are you being the servant or are you expecting God to serve you? Because you've got to remain that servant. And then in Matthew 24, starting in verse 9, it says, and it's to, um, this is Jesus talking about the last days when, um, when all that persecution will happen. Then you will be handed over to be persecuted and put to death, and you will be hated by all nations because of me. At that time, many will turn away from the faith and will both betray and hate each other. And many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. Don't fall for it. Because of the weak increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. But the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. 
and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations and then come the end will come again these false prophets are intentionally trying to deceive people and pull them away from god in matthew 24 verse 22 it says if those days had not been cut short no one would survive but for the sake of the elect those days will be shortened at that time, if anyone says, look, here is the Messiah, or there he is, do not believe it. For false messiahs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. See, I have told you ahead of time. If you see this prophet or somebody claiming to be the Messiah performing miracles, don't be surprised. Jesus just said right here that they may still do that. Be aware of that. And when Christ comes back, every eye will see, every ear will hear. It's in the Bible. It's not going to be a moment where he snuck in and, oh, nobody noticed he's been walking around for 10 years. It's not going to be like that. It's going to be very obvious. Every single eye, every single ear will know that the Messiah has come back. Don't fall for it. Keep yourself in that mode of discernment. Keep those God goggles on your face. So as you go into your prayer closet today, give yourself that gut check. Are you being the servant or are you expecting to be served? Have a wonderful day. God bless and keep walking the walk.